really want to just define what we know about vaccine efficacy. And most of you here in the room will be very uh, au fait with the vaccine trials and really in an ideal situation controlled, we look at outcomes in terms of reduction in incidence in vaccinated versus unvaccinated. In contrast, vaccine effectiveness is how does it work in a real world situation. So this is post licensure, so not necessarily ideal conditions, but exactly how it works in um, a public health setting. And really, HPV is quite different from a lot of other traditional infectious diseases where the endpoints um, occur a lot slower. Now, I draw your attention to some of the differences between the vaccines, and I'm not going to go through the details of these tables, but to give a plug for the vaccine, the new edition, the red book in your bags, and which um, really John Schiller uh, very much underpinned this uh, chapter on the characteristics and differences between and outcomes of the vaccine. So I do point you to that and show you here that both of the vaccines are VLP based. There's a, a difference in the adjuvant and a slight difference in the uh, injection schedule. Again, um, if you look at the characteristics, you probably can't read this down the back, but I suggest you look in your book at the differences uh, here in terms of the population characteristics and then primary endpoints. And again, um, I think somewhat to almost confuse us, there is some different terminology, whether we're looking at according to protocol or per protocol population between whether we're looking at the bivalent or the quadrivalent. And it also gives you the large numbers of, of uh, subjects that were looked at in the um, trials. Now this is really a summary of the outcomes uh, you can see in the pink um, Gardasil, blue and Cervix, and the proof of uh, e efficacy for um, SIN2, SIN3, 16, 18, um, and so it goes on down this uh, list. I'm sorry, I can't really read what's on there. There's a different screen on here. Um, so, in summary, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the efficacy because I think everyone will know this. You can see here for the quadrivalent vaccine up the top are the uh, young girls, down the bottom are the young boys, and you can see really fantastic efficacy rates with very tight 95% CIs for all the endpoints listed there whether we're talking about SIN23, 1618 related, AIS, vein or vein, and genital warts. And then in the men, um, genital warts and AIN. Now, if we then look at the bivalent vaccine, again for 16 and 18, you can see very high efficacy again for 1618 related outcomes as well as, again, very tight 95% CIs. Now, as I said, this is all on efficacy. And again, in the uh, chapter in the book, we talk about, think about absolute risk reduction. People compare the differences between the vaccines and the outcomes, and maybe really number of cases pre uh, prevented in terms of women vaccinated is maybe more important and more informative, particularly when you've got differences, particularly if some of them are a, a more naive population. So again, I just underscore this point. And if you look at the um, individual trials again, you'll see rate reduction for SIN23.5 for the future. And again, if you look at the um, bivalent, very similar rate reduction for those key endpoints. And again, if you look at um, adverse outcomes, and I really, again, just want to really underscore the fact that because this can really kill a program if people inadvertently get wrong what is an adverse outcome, is it coincidence or is it related to a vaccine, and really what um, has been shown statistically significant is the um, injection site pain swelling. 
Now, again, people compare the uh, um, outcomes from the point of view of antibody teeters. I just want to underscore the fact that we don't have an immune correlate of protection. We don't have a, a number, a teeter, that we can say above or below which um, a woman is protected or not protected following vaccination. And that's probably because we end up with such high antibodies um, that we really haven't had any breakthrough. And, and one day we might learn what that level is. We have to be careful also in comparing the trials, because again here from um, our chapter, if you look at what each of the different assays is measuring, and the, and the, the different um, trial designs use different assays. So whether they were looking at one epitope, total antibodies, um, neutralizing antibodies needs to be considered. So be careful in comparing. So that really brings me to vaccine effectiveness. And what should we be measuring? We can look at biological endpoints, and that's really what has um, been looked at for the trials. Obviously, cancer is too late. Um, it will take decades uh, to see the effect here. So we've used surrogates as the CIN3 or ACIS um, as the endpoints. And obviously, one of the earliest endpoints to expect to see a change due to the short incubation period is that of genital warts. Um, we can also use virological endpoints, sorry about that, um, and look at HPV prevalence uh, as an early indicator of vaccine impact. It does take considerable resources to do this, and one has to be careful about how one does it. Prevalence is assay dependent, and I give you here the two studies that were reported from the US, the NHANES, where the prevalence in the first study was 27%, but in the second study was almost um, double that. If you look carefully, the methodology changed in the two um, um, studies. So you have to use the same um, assay if you're going to compare. Second point is that prevalence is population dependent too. So if you're looking at pre and post populations, they must be consistent. And then lastly, when we're measuring HPV uh, DNA detection, what does it mean? Is that infection or was it deposition from the night before? So you have to again think carefully about how you're collecting your samples. Now in Australia where we have uh, rolled out the vaccine, since 2007 in young girls, um, 12 to 13, and with a catch up for two years to 26, we actually came up with a plan, an eight point plan for surveillance. So this is really to measure vaccine effectiveness. And you can see the list there. So we, if we look specifically at genotype prevalence in the um, female population, we did a study well before the vaccine was rolled out. And in fact, this was to really look at women, indigenous, non-indigenous, urban, rural. And you can see in the graph here for 16 and 18, the blue line and the red line, the non-indigenous being the blue and the red being the indigenous. And you can see that they pretty much parallel each other. And then we looked at uh, the rates for the uh, total high risk, the 11 high risk types. And again, there were more mixed infections in the indigenous, but otherwise pretty similar. So both groups should be affected by the vaccine. Now, I draw your attention to this oral presentation, which will be on Wednesday and uh, presented by my scientist, uh, Sapir Tabrizi. And this is really a follow up to that uh, study I just showed you. Which, and which was conducted in family planning clinics. And we selected um, four of those clinics and then followed women through, again, in a family planning setting. And you can see here that if you look at the um, NEHPV, there's a reduction, but the critical thing here is the 6, 11, 16, 18, a 77% reduction. This is just an interim analysis. Um, and which is quite a remarkable drop. 
And I'll share this um, other piece of information from the paper which is about to come out this month actually. And if you look on the far left, that's pre-vaccine data in prevalence for the different genotypes. The next column along is post-vaccine, and you can see these big difference here. If you then look at the post-vaccine and look at vaccinated versus unvaccinated, you'll see the unvaccinated versus the pre-vaccine is actually a reduction as well. So what we're really getting here is some herd immunity. We don't want the community to know too much about this because we want them all vaccinated. We don't want them to think that their friends are being vaccinated for them. Now, um, as well, this doesn't seem to be advancing. Um, in another study, we're looking at, it's not keeping going. Um, it's not advancing. <coughs> it's not coming up there. Anyway, maybe I can keep talking while we're waiting. Um, so I know we're stuck for time. So um, in the next um, slide I was going to tell you about, we have a, a study that's been funded by the Victoria Cancer Agency, and this is to look at effectiveness by trying to look at a ge more general population of young women, and um, it was, keep going, keep going. Voila. No? Okay. Um, and so what we're doing here is how do we best get the right population? And we find that very few young women have uh, landlines. So what we're doing is actually recruiting young women via Facebook. We're getting them to do a, a questionnaire online, then take a self-collected vaginal swab and send that back through the post. And again, uh, in the first 400, we're cl uh, in recruiting about 1,500 young women. We've actually also seen a huge reduction in the uh, genotyping. That actually corresponds very well to um, Australian Bureau of Statistics data in terms of being reasonably representative of the general population. The other component is to look at biopsies of women under 30, so sort of vaccine eligible age and who have CIN3. And then we're actually looking at all of those lesions and using laser micro dissection. And as you can see on the table here, where we had um, a whole tissue sex section and we had mixed infections, when we do the LCM, we just get the one of our type so we can define what is causing the SIN3 in those women. Um, so then, just to finish off, so that's showing you the data on vaccine effectiveness for HPV infection. And uh, really, um, I mentioned before, genital warts have a short incubation period. And you can see here in this data from Basil Donovan, a huge reduction in young women um, with, in genital warts since the introduction of the vaccine program with the quadrivalent vaccine. And you can see here the difference in the so-called older women, the women um, not eligible for the vaccine. Now, I can tell you now, under 21 years of age, this reduction is massive. It's in the 90%. So we see, I think we saw four cases last year with genital warts in that age group, and um, none of them had been vaccinated. We're also getting an effect on males. So um, again, some herd immunity effect because boys are not being vaccinated or not yet. They will be in February next year as part of the school-based program. So um, also in effectiveness, there's the data that's been published on high-grade lesions in young women, histologically proven. And this is not just a phenomena of Victoria. If you look across the country, this is ecological data, but you can see in blue, high-grade lesions in young women are falling. 
And um, I've shown you Australian data, but time doesn't really permit me to, to show you the data, but you can see here that there are other groups from different countries, um, the US, California, um, New Zealand, um, and Germany, Belgium have also got some reductions in um, genital warts. So just to finish off, vaccine effectiveness, well, it's complicated. Not everyone will be able to do it, but good data on this will help inform other countries, particularly those that want data and uh, have poor resources. I think the vaccines are becoming in reach now. Uh, as was stated yesterday with Gavi endorsement, but also the potential for getting do a vaccine at $5 a dose for Gavi eligible countries. And I think really um, in conclusion, the clinical trial data that which really only came out in the, in the last 10 years from when the monovalent was first published has translated very beautifully into changes in public health gain. What we really need to do now is improve upon that and get a real world impact globally. And really to get that, the success is coverage. And I think I've shown you that um, from Australia. And really to get the high coverage, to get the uh, vaccines out there, you need good political will to endorse a program and then to have it sustainable. So I think my voice lasted. <laughs> okay, I'll end there.